Hello, welcome back to How to D&D. Today it's Monster Law. Yeah, that's right. We're going to do some Monster Law, we're going to do a Monster Workshop, we're going to do some stuff. Um, but first I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff about uh, Dragon Turtle, because the Dragon Turtle's on the menu. <laughs> um, anyway, today is actually been interesting. I thought this would be not as much work, and I've actually done a lot more work than I thought I would wind up doing in the end. So, we'll see how this works out. I uh, I will be interested to see what the final product and how well I manage to actually present everything because, um, yeah, complicated. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't have thought that, but anyway. So, I'm going to put up a poll and ask you a question. Uh, my suggestion to us is get some food, some drink, make sure you are comfortable. I'm going to talk about the dragon turtle. I'll be going over everything from the basics to biology, uh, ecology, habitat, combat, how to incorporate it into your adventure, and of course I'll be talking about um, old publications and how you would fight this creature, should you be foolish enough to do so. How's it going Nacho Nacho Man? Yes, uh, it is now the afternoon here in New Zealand. So, um, <clears throat> you will notice occasionally I, I stop and take a break to drink, it's because I'm going to get um, parched and to, to uh, dry. This office is very warm. It is heading into summer for me in New Zealand. So hopefully I do all right. Um, and it doesn't, isn't too disruptive. But in any case, let us move on to the main event for today. Which is talking about this creature. And um, I actually was talking to AJ Pickett about his video on this topic not so long ago. This was the weekend that just passed, something like that. I can't remember. I know, you know, I know he popped in to have a chat. Um, anyway, uh, and I'm hoping that you'll get to see a remastered uh, Dungeon uh, Dragon Turtle uh, video from AJ in the future. But heck, he's got lots to do right now. Anyway, let's uh, let's uh, let's get started. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons because yeah, I kind of always do. Today is certainly a topic about uh, turtles. This is the Dragon Turtle Dungeons and Dragons Monster Law video. This is the one I have been hoping to do for a long time. I think there's a lot of opportunity for a dragon turtle. I think a lot of the stuff that has happened with the dragon turtle has been confusing. And therefore, it's a bit hard to know how to approach using a dragon turtle. Also, a dragon turtle tends to put people off because you're assuming that they're high level. And they may not be high level when they encounter the dragon turtle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present everything I can that I, had, that I know about, that I've found, and maybe some other stuff as well about the dragon turtle. Dragon turtles are one of the most beautiful and awesome and fearsome creatures of the oceans, the seas, lakes, and, and water in general. Uh, with the dragon turtles' deadly uh, jaws and their breath weapon and their habit for capsizing ships, uh, dragon turtles are dreaded by mariners. When a dragon turtle surfaces, it is sometimes mistaken for the reflection of the sun or the moon on the water. Uh, this is a product of the colorization of the shell. The dragon turtle's rough, uh, deep green shell is much the same color as the, the deep water that the monster actually favors. It prefers deep water rather than shallow. The silver highlights uh, on the shell of the dragon turtle have a pattern uh, a bit like light dancing over open water. And a dragon turtle's legs and tails are the a lighter green compared to everything else and they have a flecked with golden um, highlights throughout. The colorization of a dragon turtle's head is similar to the legs and tail but its crest or the spines that are part of its crest have um, golden uh, flecks through them and dark green sort of webbing connecting them as well. A dragon turtle's shell can reach up to 30 feet in diameter and an adult uh, dragon turtle can measure over uh, 40 feet from its snout to its tail. Um, so that's quite a large size, but uh, that's actually quite a small dragon turtle. Surprisingly, they can get larger, and we'll talk more about that. Now, the biology of the dragon turtle is all but unknown. 
So I had to do some research and uh, I have pulled together everything I could find. None of this is necessarily in concrete. Uh, so just bear with me as I present this. Some of it is speculation. Sages have said this, sages have said that sort of thing. Dragon turtles are known as um, testins, uh, is it test, testines, testines, I think it is, testines. They're characterized by having a shell that is mainly developed by the, the rib cage, actually. The rib cage actually forms their, their outer shell. Most of the dragon turtle's time is spent in the water, but it can move quite slowly over land if required, which it doesn't usually need to do. The shell of a dragon turtle is mostly bone, with uh, the upper section being a domed um, carapace, and then its underside is a, a flatter, it's called a, a plastron or a, a belly plate. The outer shell surface of the dragon turtle is covered in scales made out of a, a very hard fibrous protein called uh, keratin. And um, the dragon turtle survives in fresh and salt water environments, although it favours salt water over fresh water. The biological age and size limits of a dragon turtle are actually truly unknown, as they are impossible to observe. I mean, if you try to observe them, they're usually going to kill you. But sages suspect that many moving and, in fact, fixed islands may well be a sleeping ancient dragon turtle that just doesn't do very much. Uh, there are eight neck vertebrae, part of the dragon turtle's highly flexible neck, that compensates for its rigid uh, shell. The dragon turtle has no ear openings. Instead, the eardrum is covered with scales and encircled by a bony labyrinth-like cavity, which is a basically the, the ear uh, mechanism. There are multiple small lung cavities or chambers within the dragon turtle connected to a complex array of muscles because its shell can't expand when it inhales. So therefore it has to spread its um, lung capacity right throughout its body. So the, uh, the filling of air into the, those small, smaller lungs does not actually cause problems because it will contract, something has to contract within the body. The three um, chambered heart of the dragon turtle pumps deoxin, 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 <laughs> blood that doesn't have oxygen in it. Um, through the lungs to oxygenate, oxygenate the blood, called blimey, it has two um, <clears throat> arterial and it's got an, two arterial and one uh, ventricle chamber. So it's a little bit different to most animals, and there's a reason for doing it this way. A lot of um, reptiles are designed this way, and it's kind of like the combination of a reptile and a dragon. So it's kind of got the same sort of biology around that in terms of the heart. So only three chambers. Um, how the dragon turtle breaths works is kind of odd. Like the, the steam breath works, and, and it's really theoretical in terms of how it works because we don't know for sure. But it's certainly related to how this cold-blooded uh, creature regulates its body temperature to stay warm because it is a cold-blooded creature. So how does it stay warm? Well, there's usually a way of doing that, right? Um, a bony cavity below the dragon turtle's throat draws water into a water sack. And this, this sack is not like uh, made up of um, delicate um, tissues. It's actually quite strong. It's capable of resisting a lot of heat because it will wind up um, experiencing a lot of temperature um, change. Uh, there are two smaller glands below that, uh, that water sack that release different chemicals into the water pouch creating a chemical reaction that actually heats up the water. Would you believe it? Uh, steam is built up in the dragon turtle's water sac, and it can be transferred throughout the body as heat. So this is how this cold-blooded um, animal actually stays warm. It can also, if it wants to, release that heat or steam through its mouth. By doing so, its body temperature will drop. So there's a limited number of times that it can breathe out the steam without affecting its body regulation. And that would, of course, be the stipulations. You'll usually find um, there's usually a limit to how many times it can do it before it, the body of the um, dragon turtle starts to shut down and it has to hibern hibernate or it needs to sleep in some way. The dragon turtle is not a true dragon, apparently, because it, uh, it doesn't become stronger or more powerful as it reaches old age. In fact, it may become uh, more infirmed in many respects. 
but then we don't know exactly how old they can get and we don't know exactly how big they can get. Now combat with a dragon turtle, what does that look like? Though dragon turtles might be mistaken for a pleasant sight of light uh, glintering off the water, this is an illusion, okay? It's never going to be maintained for long because dragon turtles are pretty vicious. Uh, dragon turtles are fierce fighters and they will generally attack any creature that threatens their territory and presents themselves as a potential meal, of course. Uh, in combat, dragon turtles will usually attack with their formidable claws and their teeth first over anything else. There are four major weapons a dragon turtle can attack with. That is its jaw, its claws, its steam breath and its crushing tail, which actually doesn't come into play very often, but it is there. The shell provides the dragon turtle with a excellent protection um, but once the dragon turtle actually strikes a victim, it's really needed, uh, and, you know, it doesn't need to really rely on the safeguard. Protection is usually only for the first encounter, the first uh, few minutes or seconds, should I say, of uh, any interaction with a dragon turtle. Because when the dragon turtle hits you with something, it's going to hurt a lot. You're probably going to wind up very dead. The dragon turtle's shell is also, also provides the creature with a weapon for attacking ships. Uh, that certainly ships that are foolish enough to pass through its territory uninvited. Um, so it will sink uh, as deep as necessary, and then the dragon turtle will wait for the ship to pass over, and then rise up underneath the vessel, using all of its considerable uh, bulk to capsize the unlucky target or ship. Um, some smarter dragon turtles will swim underneath a ship, rip off the rudder first, so the ship can't maneuver, um, away from any kind of assault that it performs on that ship. So it's, you know, depending on the how clever your, your dragon turtle is, a couple of different techniques they might use. Now, ships under, say, 20 feet long will probably capsize about 95% of the time because that's just so small. Uh, vessels that are between, say, 20 feet and 60 feet long will usually capsize about 50% of the time. And then ships over... 60 feet will capsize maybe 20% of the time. So they've got uh, the bigger the ship, the more likely you're not to capsize. But again, this is related to the size of your dragon turtle, and they can vary in size. So a ship that isn't actually capsized uh, by a dragon turtle will sustain some damage from the dragon turtle's impact and its natural weapons because they will come into play um, when it tries to uh, knock that ship over. In combat, um, when neither its bite nor its capsizing attack is enough to actually defeat its enemy or defeat a ship, a dragon turtle will use its steam breath. It's usually its last point of call. <clears throat> now, you remember how I said by releasing um, steam through its uh, mouth and as part of its breath, it actually drops its body te temperature? This is part of the reason why. The dragon turtle can um, belch forth a cloud of scalding um, steam that will cover an area of about... 60 feet long, and that's sort of the range, and say uh, 40 feet wide and high. So it's quite a large cloud that comes out. Dragon turtles can use their deadly breath about three times a day before they would need to rest, or they're going to wind up going into hibernation, or potentially go into um, respiratory um, arrest. So they've got to be careful. All dragon turtles fight to the death. Um, expect no mercy and they give no mercy because that they, they, don't, they don't expect you to be merciful to them and they won't be merciful to you. They're a very, very tough creature and monster. Now what about the habitat and society of the dragon turtle? Dragon turtles are extremely solitary creatures for a number of different reasons and I will explain those. Um, large, desolate sea caves and secret underground caverns uh, that can be accessed only through water, are the dragon turtle's favoured lairs. Um, a dragon turtle swallows treasure to transport it, and then it regurgitates that treasure when it reaches its lair. So it doesn't. it's not like it's got hands, it can't carry anything. These lairs are difficult to find, but adventurers who actually locate a dragon turtle's cave will find it filled with treasures of all types, and it will be quite extensive. Once a dragon turtle uh, gathers, gathers up a treasure, 
um, hoard of some kind, it will protect that treasure hoard till death. Like it will not leave it. Unlike a dragon which might potentially leave the dragon hoard and consider coming back at a later date. Dragon turtles speak their own highly developed language and duplicating that language is difficult to do and also learning that language even more difficult to do because usually if you have a discussion with a dragon turtle you wind up getting eaten. A dragon turtle's territory is well defined and uh, it may cover as much as 50 square miles of open water. Um, other dragon turtles uh, are allowed into the area only during the mating season um, though other turtles of the same sex will always fight to the death upon meeting. Like, they do not uh, interact well with the same sex. It is this hostility, uh, host host you know, the fact that they're so hostile to each other and their own kind, this is what keeps the number of dragon turtles relatively low. Now, courtship and the reproductive mounting and egg laying of a dragon turtle is identical to a normal turtle that builds a nest on land and lays eggs. And then of course they hatch and then move back into the sea. Uh, mariners of any experience recognize the territorial claims of a dragon turtle and will often make extravagant tributes uh, to a uh, turtle controlling an area necessary for safe and speedy trade and travel. And if they didn't, they're probably going to wind up very, very dead. Now the ecology of the dragon turtle. Dragon turtles are carnivorous and they will eat almost any creature, including humans of course and other dragon turtles, uh, to satisfy that uh, voracious appetite they have. Uh, large fish seem to be their preferred food for any kind of dragon turtle diet. Uh, the turtle can often be found lurking in the weeds, the muck at the bottom of a lake or, or the sea waiting for fish to pass by. In particular, in uh, poor years for fishing where there isn't a lot of food, dragon turtles have been known to use their, their breath weapon to kill large groups of birds that stay close to the water uh, or land on uh, a section of water. So seabirds would be their, their primary target as a, a form of food when there isn't enough fish. The impact on the environment is significant when a dragon turtle lives near something like coral reefs or the coastline or beaches or beneath the, the sea floor. As its, its bulk and the way that it operates causes major damage as it moves around. Uh, conflict often arises between the dragon turtle and many intelligent aquatic races such as the mermen, um, Lakatha, I think it's Lak, Lakatha, something like that. Uh, but any any kind of marine creature that are that are intelligent, they do not get along. And why is this? It's usually competition for the ideal lair or ideal um, territory or location. Like many other land-based relative um, relatives, um, dragon turtles are considered quite treacherous, um, selfish by all creatures, and they and they don't like to share the do domain. So I mean, a lot of creatures, whether they're below the sea or above the sea, don't get along with each other. Dragon turtles are just a, a much more extreme example of this. The shell of the dragon turtle can be used for a, a number of different things, making furniture, book covers, jewellery, um, spell components and building materials, particularly because their shell is so large. Um, the dragon turtle's shell makes an outstanding shield and armor if you can get hold of it because of the shell um the uh, the shell's uh, strength and its natural resistance to the dragon turtle's uh, own breath weapon uh, that means that the weapons the armor or the shield made from this material is stronger than normal uh, which also means that a dragon turtle shield or armor will probably be able to resist destruction from fire and um, scalding steam now, how do you go about incorporating the dragon turtle into your adventure? I've got a bunch of different ideas. Some of these ideas you'll like and some of them you won't. Take the ideas you like and leave the rest. The steam breath can be used as a propulsion method to smash into a ship. It can also be used to launch it into the air. Now, if you want to know more about that, you need to check out AJ Pickett because he actually talks about this um, in a bit more depth than I do. 
The whole world is, I say, a colossal dragon turtle floating through space. Like you could just make the dragon turtle the actual world. Um, a cave the player characters explores turns out to be, say, a sleeping dragon turtle that's left their mouth open and uh, they've walked on in or clambered in. <clears throat> a series of small islands could well be sleeping ancient dragon turtles with their own ecosystem living on top of them that float across the, the ocean or the seas together. Uh, you could have the dragon turtle uh, be an environmental warrior that sinks ships if they dump garbage into the sea or oceans. Uh, I like the idea of having sea elves using a dragon turtle that they have enchanted uh, and mind controlled to drag them through the water while they're riding on uh, water skis. That's right. We're going to use our dragon turtle as a speedboat so that sea elves can go pleasure riding and water skiing. What about adding in a, a sort of a moving shop? Uh, a traveling turtle merchant, for example, that sells aquatic gear from their shop built on top of an old dragon turtle's shell. And uh, that, uh, I mean, whether the dragon uh, turtle is still in the shell is up to you, but it could be at least just a floating shell that it maneuvers around on. You could also have a dragon turtle that has cannons mount mounted onto the shell, turning this creature into a sort of like a, a mobile dreadnought ironclad ship for blasting um, coastal line uh, castles and fortresses. <laughs> so a whole bunch of pretty strange ideas I realise, but take the ones you like. Now, how do you go about uh, defeating the dragon turtle? Don't fight a dragon turtle because it's it's really too large and powerful. Probably the best thing you can do is do not try to fight it. Uh, bribing and negotiating with a dragon turtle is the smartest thing to do for safe passage and for mercy. Okay, You need to be offering it some sort of treasure for it not to wind up attacking you. Um, you want to have your flying ship rather than your sea vessel, uh, if you can. Like, if you're going to travel anywhere and you have to deal with a place, uh, a location where there's going to be um, dragon turtles, you probably want a flying ship and we want to be a good distance up in the air rather than traveling along the, um, the water. But if you have no choice, you have no choice. Uh, I would suggest shooting the dragon turtle with long-ranged bows and spells. Nothing, there's no, in no way do you want to be close to this thing. It can just do too much damage to too many things too quickly. Now the publication history and origin of this creature is quite unique. Uh, originally, the dragon turtle uh, is created from Chinese mythology that combines the turtle and dragon. And we first see this in the Monster Manual for First Dead Edition uh, in 1977. And then it come, uh, we didn't see another printing in the Monstrous Manual uh, I believe it's the Monstrous Manual. Is it the Monstrous Manual? Yes, it is. The Monstrous Manual for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Second Ed Edition in 1993. And then again, we get it, uh, a Monster Manual uh, for 3.5, the, the first one, uh, in 2003. There's nothing for Fourth Ed Edition. And then the Monster Manual for 5e in 2014 uh, presented the Dragon Turtle again. Uh, and as a result of that, we have a reasonable body of information, not an extensive body of information, but probably enough to get by if you really wanted to. And I'm hoping that this was useful to you in some way, and if it was, fantastic, if you found it interesting. If you have any questions or any feedback you would like to give, please use the comments section. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Give me a second, I am just going to um, flick back over to my face, drink some water. We'll go through the chat, and then we're going to have a look at this, um, this stat block and see if there's anything that needs to be altered and changed based on the law that we're given for this creature, and, and you know, is the, does the challenge rating meet, match up with what supposedly the maths is supposed to be doing here? Or does it, has it got something missing? Like, is there something missing from the dragon turtle that should be there? These are all the sort of discussions I like to have. This is what I call the uh, the workshop section of uh, of today. 
Anyway, let me grab my glasses because apparently I need to use them. I also need to have a lozenger in my mouth. I don't know why. I'm really, really um, a bit... Um, it's something funny going on in my throat right now. I don't know exactly what's going on, but we'll, we'll see how we go here. Anyway, welcome to everybody's here. I am going to, well, I'll just leave, a little dragon turtle image there doesn't matter. We can leave that there, that's fine. Now my eyes, now we're working. Okay, we'll need the glasses. Um, and we'll go through the chat fairly quickly. Okay, so I can't go up. Why can't I go up? Won't let me go up. Okay, fine. Let's have a look at this. If I, I missed your your uh, your comment in the chat, I apologise because YouTube won't let me scroll up for some reason. So four votes. Oh, there's not too many people here today. What experience do you have with the with a dragon turtle? Running the creature zero. Okay, I've run the drag dragon turtle quite a few times myself. Encountered the creature. Yeah, I've done that too. So twenty five percent none. 75%. Maybe that's an example of why nobody is here today. Like, there's a, there's a couple of people, but not a lot. Okay, so, Noroak. Hello, how are you? Um, I can't see your top comment there. You like that phrase? Oh, good, I'm glad you like that phrase. <laughs> How's it going, big kid? Noroak is also a patron, by the way, if people didn't know. How's it going, big kid? How are you? I will be running a dragon turtle soon. Well, good, so hopefully this will help you get that done because that's the whole point right so make it easier for you to run your your creatures and um, the more information you have on them the easier it is to figure out what to do with them that's always been sort of my my general feeling <clears throat> so yes um yeah we, we, are, we are doing we're doing pretty well at this point i would say i would say we're doing very well at this point we've got lots of information to work with um, what's that, Noroak? You definitely don't want to um, overwhale um, hunt in its domain. No, you do not want to go and hunt in its domain. No way. <laughs> right, the Coralex. <laughs> How's it going, Derry? How are you? You, you fear a pointy hat? Why do you fear a pointed hat? I have a 3D model with a castle on its back. Ah, yes, I, I do remember you mentioning that, um, Big Kid. The party will arrive on a land on a large sea ship. Um, should I have only... <laughs> should I have it only chase them away if it awakens? That's up to you. I mean, no, uh, you, you had the discussion with me before, um, Big Kid, um, in Discord. And um, I, it's up to you. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to just say you, you need to do it that way. Well, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's it's water. It's not vodka. I can't drink alcohol anymore. <laughs> Lorax, my favourite. Um, ah, right, okay. Your draw, your own, your favourite draw hero. I'm just trying to figure out. Ah, oh, yeah, I think I know what you mean now. A dragon turtle Lorax is terrifying. <laughs> No, I understand they have dropped um, a monstrous compendium volume for Dragonlance. I did have a quick look at it. If people want me to have um, to, to to peruse it at some point, you'll let me know. Um, what I want to do though is I want to have a look at the Dragon Turtle specifically and break down whether it is not powerful enough or needs to be more powerful or something like that so what i'll do is i'll get my phone going and i will uh then be able to check on the chat and while we're doing that we will decide whether to do something like check out that i i do still want to check to see if the the monster itself is reasonable in terms of its construction I keep doing this sort of thing, don't I? Um, yeah, okay, so that's what we want. Is this working? Is it live? And is it active? It looks like it's kept up to date. Good, all right, so excellent. So it's, how's it going, Milton? How are you doing? 
Ah, okay. You're on my TV. Is your TV a 4K TV? Because if your TV is a 4K TV, you're coming. You're probably getting me in 4K, baby. Um, live streaming in 4K. What a ask, but I'm glad I'm doing it. Okay, like so. Let's um, pull up our workstation. Where is it? That's that one. Moving into properties. Find it. Okay, that's the one I've got currently, but that's not the one I want. I want the dragon turtle. And we'll go back, make sure I've got it here. That's cool. So we can see that, and then I can check it against the... Now I'm going to page 200 and 274. Okay, oh, 274 of the uh, Dungeon Master Guide to check what we're doing with our dragon here. Or dragon turtle since it's not a true dragon uh, all right there we go that uh, that gives us what we needed so first off dragon turtle challenge rating 17 so what does a challenge rating 17 creature look like interesting so what i i think the first thing that comes to mind when i see challenge rating 17 and i see damage resistance there i, I can see there's going to be some problems with the dragon turtle right away I think almost immediately I, I, it makes me think there's going to be some problems. So first off, it's uh, proficiency bonuses are plus six, so they are aiming for a plus six. So that's our intention. The next thing is its armor class is supposed to be about a 19. They've got it as a 20. That's actually one point out is, is no real issue. I would say it's actually uh, nothing to wonder, wonder or, or care about in the slightest. Hello Fender, how are you doing? Fendar is also a patron, also a, um, <clears throat> a moderator. Big Kid's also a patron, by the way. I almost forgot that. Now, our our hit points for this creature. So I, I'm fine with the armor class being one point above. If it were two points above, it would, there would be problems. So 311 to 325 hit points is what it should generally have. It's actually got more, more hit points than that. That's just the average. We've got 341 hit points for this creature. That's actually very, very high. <clears throat> um, what's that, Milton? Challenge rating 17 means um, level 4 character is going to die. Well, you, you shouldn't be putting a level 4 character against this creature. If they're fighting it, they're, they're, they're foolish. And if they have to fight it, you, you might as well just tell them... Uh, you come across a drag um, dragon turtle and you die. Do you know what I mean? Just get it out of the way. Uh, headphones. Big joke. <laughs> okay, alright. So. Let's have a look at what the maximum hit points on this, this creature would be. Because I think maybe this creature's got way too many hit points. And now the, the reason that might they may be doing this is because um, it's such a bulky creature. That may be part of the reason what, what's going on here. Uh, so let's go, so it's 22 multiplied by 20 equals what? Um, so we only need 10 will get us 200. So that's 240. 200? 400. 440. I believe that's my maths right there. Then we add a 110. Uh, comes out as a grand total of 550 hit points at its maximum. That's rather a lot. So it's really, it's hit point range is actually sitting in, in the challenge rating 24 range. Which means that they have, they have loaded it up with hit points. Making this beast the sort of creature which is a bit of a slog fest. I think also part of the reason maybe they've done this is because you're not actually supposed to kill a dragon turtle. There's a stat block. It's like providing players with a stat block for a god. It's a silly thing to do. 
You shouldn't have them. <clears throat> All right. So what's the next thing? Um, our attack modifier. It's a chain on trading 17, so it should be a 10. It's got a 13. So it's actually, it's challenge, it's, it's attack bonus is, is way higher than kind of expected. Why is that? That's because its proficiency bonus is a plus six and its strength um, modifier is a seven. So you wind up with, you wind up with 13. So the math there is right. Maybe this is a creature that's got a challenge rating that's too low. And then how much damage does it do? If it's, a, if it's supposed to be challenge rating 17, it should be doing about 105 to 110 per round. So if, if that were the case, CR24, um, and much to my surprise, I am, I'm quite perplexed by its, um, its attack bonus is, is really high bonus. But I think maybe that needs to stay where it is. Because actually mathematically it makes sense. And it may be this, the challenge rating needs to be adjusted. Um, okay. 105 to 110. That's what our target is for damage. So what do we get? We have multi-attack. There are three attacks. One with its bite, two with its claws. It can make one tail attack in place of its two claw attacks. So is, it is its tail attack actually comparable to the, the claw attack? Or is it basically only there as a product of positioning? So it does less damage compared to two claw attacks. But strength uh, saving throw and be pushed up to 10 feet away from the dragon turtle and knocked prone. Knocked prone in water doesn't really mean very much, though. Um, knocked prone in water means what? You're upside down in the water? You're bobbing around? You're already bobbing around. It doesn't really make an awful lot of sense. <clears throat> okay, so let's let's have a look at that and, and break that down. I'm going to ignore the tail attack because the tail attack kind of throws things out. But the bite attack... Compare and com um, combined with the claw attack is what we need to worry about. The steam breath is not an issue because this is a cone, 60 foot cone. It's going to hit multiple targets. It's probably going to hit more than two targets. So 52 points of damage. If you get at least two or more targets, you're kind of in the range. But it is a recharge feature. So that means you don't necessarily get to use it all the time. So that's, that's another factor to take into consideration. Kaboom. We're going to have something kaboom. You guys are going to blow up um, some uh, dynamite, are you? barrels of gunpowder are going to be exploding very shortly okay so bite attack is 26 you're gonna what are you gonna make whack it with dairy you're gonna whack it with something okay so 26 for the bite and then two 16s for the claws 16 and 16 comes to oh my god that's really very low that's 40, three sixes, 12, 18, isn't it? 18, 18, it's 58 points of damage. My God, that's so far out. So this creature, outside of its um, steam breath, does not do enough damage, and it's got too many bloody hit points. Okay, that's not a good sign. So let's um, let's have a look at the challenge rating and have a look at the DC for this thing. The DC should be a 19. So right now, this creature is, where is it batting? At a 58. It's batting at challenge rating 9. Challenge rating 9 for this creature with the damage output it does. Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Why has this creature not got Siege Monster? Is anybody sort of seeing this myself? I like I'm thinking this is a siege monster. It should do double damage to um, because of its size, it should be doing double, double damage to structures and ships. 
should be able to wreak havoc. havoc. Something's going to explode in my face? Great. Or is it a DM's face? Or is it my specifically my face? I don't know. You tell me. Okay, so there's a lot of problems with this creature. Where? Where is it? Where is Siege Monster? It's not there. I don't, don't see it. Next, um, the DC. DC save. Now that should be sitting at a 17. It is supposed to be a 19. What have they got? They've got a 20. Well, that's actually fine. That's close enough. It's not two points out. 20. It's a little bit on the higher side than uh, rather than the lower side, which I always prefer. So, yeah, I can live with that. That's actually probably fine. That is uh, challenge rating 17. That, that's uh, about right. Um, what's that challenge? Okay, so this is, this is going to be interesting. So what we're going to do... I'm going to take all the stats from this thing. I'm going to plug it into um, the 5e tools um, challenge rating calculator and see what they say. I think the problem is that the damage resistance fire is going to throw things out. Now the problem with damage resistance fire is I when I looked at the calculator, the calculator takes in consideration damage resistance and damage immunity as being almost identical in how it, it calculates things. That's a problem because it's not the same. Having damage resistance and having damage immunity, completely different. Now, you're probably thinking, hang on, it's got a steam breath. Why has this monster got damage resistance and not uh, damage immunity? I think because it's not true fire. You're heating the water, you're not actually breathing out fire as such. And it's a chemical reaction that it can um, that has worked out how to funnel through its body because it's so cool. Okay, so it's like the law of thermodynamics is if you have something hot and something cold, the thing that's cold absorbs the heat and therefore it balances out everything. So that's probably what we're dealing with here. Um, okay, so you guys are going to surf a tsunami. Good Lord, you guys have got some sort of plan going on there. I'm going to leave you to it while I do this. So we're going to pull up the 5e tools and uh, have a look. I'm going to have to just move myself back a little bit. I'm not going to be able to do this otherwise. So 5e tools. Um, CR calculator. There it is. should be in there somewhere. Used this before. Um, I, I, it's not perfect, this calculator, but it's easier than trying to do the mathematics yourself, okay? So, um, I'm going to put that out of the way. I'm going to grab my other book here. So I've got it in front of me. Make life a little bit easier for myself. Put my, my, my numbers and my calculations over there. And, okay, so first, first problem is challenge rating is a 17. No, I don't want the ad. Get rid of the ad. <laughs> All right, so going down, having a look at this thing. Should be a 17. Expected is um, 17. So we'll see how that works. Hit points. Our current hit points are extravagantly high. 341. 341. It's just a big bucket of hit points. Its armor class is a 20 because of its uh, natural armor, which is fine. And then it's gargantuan, so it's quite a large creature. It's as big as they really get. We used to have colossal, but we don't have colossal now. It is... How many hit dice does it have? It has 22 hit dice. And they are d20s. Whoops, too far. 22. Okay, now, its constitution is a 20. So it's got a very high constitution. Maybe that is the factor that's kicking things up too much. I know. The calculation for the hit points is correct as far as I can tell at this point. Um, no, I don't want to. This has got to go away. This is not going to help me. Damage per round. We calculated the damage per round is actually very low. It's only 58. That's if everything hits. 
if they, if it misses, well, that's different again. Its attack bonus is a 13, which is quite high. It does have a save, and its save is a DC 20. Use your saves. DC 20, whoops, 20. Come on. It's not letting me move that. Why is not not letting me move? It won't let me go above that. Now, why is that? Okay, let me just... Can I just type it in? 20. Okay. All right. Let's see. So, it, it obviously, it was... It, it, it's, it, it must be really far out. Something's whack if that's happening. Um, what have you got here? I see somebody has something, said something on the phone here. And I'm, uh, it's a bit hard for me to keep up. Um, you guys are talking about a whole lot of other stuff here. Dragon Turtle, um, Bronze Fume in the Temple of Crushing Waves, principal uh, ambushed and decimated our party. Um, we did kill it and have turtle soup. Okay. How's it going, JP? <laughs> JP's part of my um, home group, by the way. Um... 3d6 for a horn, 2 for a keg. Uh, how's it going, Dungeons and Chronics? How are you doing? All right, so, okay. So let's uh, keep let's keep going. So it's got damage resistance and not damage immunity, but it doesn't differentiate that. It doesn't have any vulnerabilities, so we're not marking that down. So this here, this just doing this, I'm not going to, I'm going to do this last, okay? Because as soon as we add resistances and immunities, it throws the... Um, challenge rating all over the place and the fact that they've lumped resistance and immunity together is, is too, too it's too much like a broadsword it's not uh, it's not precise enough flies and deals damage at range no it doesn't do that but does it have saving throw proficiencies it does it has it has dex con and wisdom it has three or four it's got three of them so that's that there That'll have changed things. Um, aggressive, no, it's not Orc. Demon Lich doesn't have any of those abilities. I don't think it has anything that sort of stands out here as a, oh, we need to put that in. Um, Tarask doesn't have that. Does, it doesn't have legendary resistances, no. Heat body, no, no. Damage transfer, no. Martial, no, no, no. Regurgitate, possession. A regeneration, Relentless, Stench. None of those are there. Okay, so let's have a look at the challenge rating before I do anything with putting it in the damage, resistance, and immunity. So it says its offensive challenge rating is 11. Its defensive challenge rating is 20. This is one of the reasons why I dislike it when they do this. You know why? It's because the monster comes out whack. And... You know, so what you wind up with is a monster that just is there to smash and doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Because if it had a offensive challenge rating closer to 20 or 17, it would be a scarier monster, would it not? And that, that means you would have to you'd have to face this creature when you're more like level 17 or 16 rather than trying to tackle it at lower levels, which is ridiculous. Uh, barrel float on top, please. Let's see if we got to... The limit. What is the limit? Some sort of limit. Anyway, let's add in the damage resistance immunity thing and see what the challenge rating does at that point. So right now it's pretty close to where it should be, which is a 17, right? We hit this thing here, and I'm going to go down to resistance. And if it changes it to what? It didn't change at all. Holy Toledo. It didn't change it at all, but look at this monster. Its challenge rating offensively is 11, so it's it's weak as piss. Um, its defensive challenge rating is 20, so it's got a lot of defense, and it winds up as a challenge rating 16, which winds up essentially being a shit monster. Okay, so here's a question for you, for those of you who are still here. How do we go about dealing with this? Do we just take the monster as it is? Do we put in some things? Do we give it siege, um, give it siege abilities like you know destroying structures? I mean, it's big enough; it can do that. Um, do we, uh, do we 
fiddle with the challenge rating to make it line up more with what we really kind of expecting from a from a dragon turtle maybe challenge rating 17 isn't actually high enough i had this discussion with aj and we, we were feeling like the dragon turtle had kind of been powered down um and they weren't the the most the terrifying things that you kind of looked at in the past so let me just put into the um my phone okay Uh, actually, maybe I should make a poll for this. There's, is, there's, is there enough of you that you'd actually respond? And a poll means you don't have to actually comment. Uh, but those of you who want to comment can. So let's let's do that. I think that's a good starting point for us. Is we'll go there, over here. So I'll not have that up at present. And I'll go back to the chat. We've got 15 people, so there's a bit of a spread. Hardly anybody's ever used this creature. I'm not surprised. Yeah, Norak, I think adding siege ability and increasing its damage output is necessary. Otherwise, it's just... So, let me put in a new poll. Um, how do you want to fix the dragon turtle? Okay, this is my question, and I'm going to put down um, increase damage and add siege. Uh, did I did I write down siege correctly? Um, because right now it just doesn't do anywhere near enough damage. Uh, do we want to... <clears throat> um, make it a CR17 um, make it a, a true CR17 so that means we just build it based off the the chart, the quick uh, monster stat chart of 17. So that means we would be aiming for those sorts of numbers rather than what we've got there. Which I feel like it can be done, but there needs to be a lot of changes take place. Um, or um, build, build the monster... as as oh, makes sense uh, or do nothing okay so hopefully those of you who are here are about to vote so we're going to either increase we're just going to increase damage and add siege or we're going to make it a true CR17 monster which means we, there's a lot of things to it to, to do with or we make the monster just make sense or we do nothing so this is this is what i'm going to get you to vote on now and while you are voting that will give me a chance to just get myself my head in line in terms of uh, what i need to do with this thing um because there's a lot going on here and for me this creature i think ultimately seeing some of the numbers they've put in here and what they're trying to do um Doing something about the, the hit points is probably, dropping the hit points is what I would be more inclined to do. Um, I'd be more inclined to drop the hit points. I would be more inclined to increase damage output. Damage up, that would be what I would want to do. Um, adding siege. Um, it's got all of the attacks. They just don't do enough damage. Um, what else would we be, be trying to do? I think... What it really needs to be aiming for is, jeez. Oh, it probably needs to be aiming more for a challenge rating 24. Do you, Honestly, I think this monster needs to be more of a challenge rating 24. Why is that? I'll, I'll tell you why I think that's the case. Because one, we can make its attack bonus more in line with 
a um, 12. It's a lot easier to make it a 12 rather than 13. So its attack modifier would be a little bit less. But it still would sort of kind of work to a certain degree. And then I guess the other thing is that um, it means that we can we, we can keep, you know, our the hit points won't dr dramatically de decrease. Um, it's just that some things are obviously sitting in that range already. And um, it would be easier because we don't want to fiddle with too much. That's that's just my concerns. If we fiddle too much, it won't feel like it anymore. Poll make it nice, uh, just blind. Oh, don't be silly. Um, siege would be important for taking down ships. I think that's that's absolutely dragon turtle ally. You <laughs> dragon turtle. Um, for glasses, you want to, okay, I think uh, it should have some minor weather changing abilities. Nor oak, there's nothing in the law that suggests anything like that. So I think we leave that alone. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think that's something you add yourself. Um, I reckon we should give the dragon turtle a nice top hat. Uh, we, we, Milton, come on. Come on, people, stay with me. Not just boring large turtle. It it needs to it needs something done to it. I think the dragon turtle has been seriously nerfed. I do think that seven a challenge rating seventeen is probably not appropriate for it. It should be a natural disaster. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But I don't think it's bringing a natural disaster with it. Um, when much becomes attack three, much per round. I don't know. Understand what you're saying here. I replaced the Dragon Turtle and Princess of the Apocalypse with a Hydra so the party would have something they could fight. Yeah, yeah, Siege. Okay, so our, our current poll, based off the comments, I can see your comments coming through. Hello, how are you doing, Luke C? Didn't it used to have an ability that let it um, capsize ships with a certain size? I think it did, but I think what we do is we just give it the Siege ability and it kind of does what we need to. So nine votes out of the 13 people are here. Uh, increase damage and siege, 44%. Make it a true challenge rating, 17. Not that many people want to do that. Build the monster as it makes sense, 33%, and do nothing. Okay. All right, so we're going to start off with tinkering with its increasing its damage and adding siege to this creature. Okay? It seems, it seems pretty obvious to me that that's where people's heads are at, which is fine with me. I don't have a problem at all. So... Going over to my workstation, um, this is the workstation here. We will start with that process and I'll come back to the, the poll and see how we're doing. At the top of the hour, I'm going to take a, a break. So it's only two minutes from the top of the hour, so I'm going to get started now and then we will uh, come back into this. Uh, I do not want to look at this right now, thank you very much. Uh, so, we are creating a monster. Create a monster. We are going to go Dragon Turtle. Um, dragon Turtle. Where are you? Can I spell Dragon Turtle? There he is. Pardon me, it's just catching up. Okay, so version one. We've got a copy of our Dragon Turtle, so we'll save that and then we'll see what we've got to work with. Okay, alright, so um, I'm going to go to my collection. Uh, and we will cycle on down uh, a few things to deal with at some point. So, Dragon Turtle is our first point of call. Yes, I'm aware it is not different enough, but right now... It's a poor creature. We don't need it the way it is. Um, next dream, Fred, uh, wearing vest with um, turtle camo. Really? You think that's going to happen? No. Okay, so go remastered. Okay, I'm going to have to take these glasses off. It's not going to work. Uh, we'll see if I can... My biggest problem is... Uh, Switching from the big screen to this little screen on my phone and then looking at the page My eyes are really going to struggle with all of this Okay, and if I do my maths wrong and somebody spots it, please let me know. Okay um, I'm not really worried about it's whether it's neutral or not. We're leaving all that alone 
Um, we've got Gargantuan, that's all fine. Remastered. We say it's 17 for now, but we need to add in the Siege ability. We'll do that as the first task. Our first task is to get that sorted out. So, um, let's go here. Uh, we go to Monsters. No. Rules. Monsters. Now, what creature has Siege? I believe... Doesn't the Kraken or the Tarask have it? Kraken, Tarask. I think it's Kraken or Tarask. If somebody remembers which um, which creature is big enough to have the siege ability, let me know. I'd be interested. Uh, Kraken. Has a Kraken got uh, siege? Fling, lightning, multi siege monster. Here we go. We'll just take the siege monster ability because that should be there. Uh, copy. <clears throat> and we'll take that over and just plonk it into here. Paste it. I'm just going to make sure that I get this right. Uh, so a dragon turtle can breathe air and water. So one of the things you'll notice, people, is that with your dragon turtle, um, your dragon turtle is slightly different to a normal turtle. A normal turtle can hold its breath for about an hour but it still has to breathe air but it can because it's got so many lungs and it can hold so much air within it and it's really efficient at uh, um, using that air within its body it can it can essentially hold its breath for a really long time dragon turtles don't do that sort of thing i remember having a uh, we had a conversation with somebody about dragon turtles not being able to hold their breath or not being able to breathe um, air and water and then suddenly the ancient dragon turtle came along, and uh, there was discussions around that. Firing up my fax and dial up. Uh, so, um, uh, Fungi me, Fred. Fred in a turtle role play, fifty dollars in my pocket. Dude, you don't have to do that. Tarask, thank you. Um, Trent. Oh, uh, yes, that's right, Luke. Thank you for that. That's good. We're in. We're in business. So we've got that done. So I just need to put in dragon turtle. Okay, so dragon turtle. So here, so we've done that. That was easy. That's the easy bit. <laughs> okay. Changing up the damage and figuring out how much damage to get it to do. And then what the final uh, creature will have with regard to, um, I guess, what it will have with regard to a challenge rating at the end of that. We will we'll calculate last, of course. Horrifying fact that the turtles can breathe with their their butts. I wish I never knew. <laughs> they don't really breathe with their butts. They 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 draw oxygen in from many different locations. It's a little bit different. Um, and the way that they feed oxygen throughout their body is again a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I suppose you could you could describe it as that. <laughs> Anyway, so let's deal with the damage output. The damage output is pathetic. We need to be hitting about 110 to 105, and we're not hitting that at all. And what we have here is a dragon turtle that has three attacks. One with its bite, two with its claws, and it make a tail attack. So now we've got to divide and think up based on the amount of damage that it's currently doing. So I'm going to go back to the actual stat block. It'll make it easier for me to actually get my head around um, as I break it down. And you guys can actually see what's what's here. Fire resistance, we don't need to worry about making that immunity. Fire resistance is fine. Saving throws are fine. Um, and I will just go back into here. Uh, Dragon Turtle Remastered. My fish, Brenta, breathes air. Yes, that's right. I'm sure it does. Okay. Do we think a, a 40 foot swim speed is good? I think it should be 60 feet. Norike. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. What is the swim speed of a Kraken? Now, a Kraken is very fast. Uh, and it's a cephalopod, so that makes sense. Uh, its swim speed is 60 feet. So so I don't think if, if the Kraken is 60 feet, 
and it's a cephalopod essentially and it is essentially just a giant um squid if we if we push it up too much it's going to be too 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 fast so yeah i know where you're coming from here I feel like its speed on on land is 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 probably too slow though. So twenty feet, it would certainly be faster on land than a kraken. A kraken apparently is twenty feet land speed. I don't think that a, uh, a, a dragon a dragon turtle so large that even if it moves slowly, you are still not going to be able to outrun that thing very easily. Um, so have a think about how you would like that to look. I think the land speed should be going up from 20 feet to a bit higher. The swim speed, we could go a little bit higher, but dragon, uh, turtles don't actually swim that quickly. Do you know what I mean? They're just not built like a fish. So, yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at our damage output, and let's break up our, our, two, our attacks. My, my biggest problem with the dragon turtle, I think, is going to be the fact that it probably should be a legendary creature. But unless unless we uh, we decide it, I guess is that a question I should have asked? Should it be a? Yes, that's true. In fact, sixty feet for a a kraken is probably too slow in water, considering how fast a um, a squid can move in water. Sixty feet is bloody slow, isn't it? Um, Let's do a let's do our speed comparison. Speed of um swim hang on, swim speed. <laughs> okay. Swim speed of turtle. What's the swim speed of a turtle? Would you believe it? 35 kilometers per hour. You know, that's a lot faster than a human can go. That's a swim speed. Okay. What if I go swim speed of a squid? <laughs> swim speed of a squid. Really? It's actually quite slow in comparison. Oh, that's a particular... How fast do they, the large ones, go? So they don't actually go that quickly. Interesting. Maybe you've got a point here, um, Noroak. Maybe you're right. Maybe the, the turtle should actually swim faster than a squid. I hadn't even considered that as a possibility. Swimming dynamics and propulsion of squids. Um, are squids faster than octopus? Okay, octopus are generally faster than a squid. Okay, and a squid can reach higher speeds for short bursts. Octopus can move propelling themselves through water with their jet like ah oh, okay so they don't they don't have the they don't have the jet propelled ability that the octopus has so actually a squid is actually quite slow compared to a turtle shit i wouldn't have guessed it okay noroak you you've got me you got me there i think you've uh, you've sold me on the idea Um, just joined. Uh, you filled out the CR calculator wrong. It's offensive. Challenge rating is not including the steam breath. Um, the steam breath is not something that is, um, is there. The steam breath doesn't count, baby. Do you know why the steam breath doesn't count? The steam breath doesn't do anywhere near as much damage. Unless you actually are able to target more than two creatures, it's not actually doing that much. Okay? Steam breath, I wouldn't count that. Okay, it's not in the calculator, but I don't believe that it is a 13. So um, thank you for your um, your suggestion, um, Avenging um, Blowfish, but um, I'm going to, again, disagree with you. We are going to disagree a lot, I suspect. <laughs> um, I would just copy the legendary actions from the Ancient Dragon Turtle and then lower the damage to match the CR you're aiming for. That's actually a very good idea, um, Avenging Blowfish. Um You don't count the claw, um, you don't count the tail. You're counting the tail and that's not part of the factor. Okay, so if you have a look at this, it states the following. You get three attacks, one with your bite and two of your claws. You can substitute two of your claw attacks, okay, to make a tail attack. 
okay? You can make one tail attack in place of two claw attacks. So that would mean you either get to make one bite attack or two claw attacks or one bite attack and one tail attack. So your 68 is, is actually not right. I, I know you're trying to add too many different things in here and it, it doesn't work. So you're, you're not going to make that work at all. Okay, you've read that wrong. Um, but your suggestion about the ancient um, dragon turtle and porting over a lot of that is probably very sensible. The problem is with the ancient dragon turtle Putting in the legendary actions, it's already a legendary creature. So now we're really, what we're talking with about here is a dragon turtle that's not an ancient dragon turtle. So we're not going to make it a legendary creature. We're going to just try to build it as... Um... No, it's not your bad. Um, this, doing this sort of stuff is really hard. It's really hard to calculate. It's so difficult. So what we've got to do is we've got to look at our bite and we've got to look at our claws and we've got to decide which is the most powerful. Clearly the bite needs to be more powerful, correct? And the claws are less powerful. So whatever we pump up needs to be going into the right place. So let's divide this into bite and uh, claw. Bite and then claw. And we'll do a, a little bit of maths as we go to figure out our numbers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you guys to do some maths yourselves. Try to figure out the average. Remember, we're not changing any of its major stats because that would just cause too much trouble. What we are going to try to do is push out its damage. Output needs to be aiming for that 105 to 110, more in line with a challenge rating 17, which may mean the monster winds up being a higher challenge rating, but that's all right. Um, so what I want you to do is hashtag... Um, how many, how many, how many um, D12s for the bite? So we need to increase the number of 12-sided dice for the bite. There's three currently, so we need to increase that. How many do you think it should be? And then next question, how many... Um, D8s for the claws. And remember, right now we've only got two D8s, so there's room to go up. Remember, you get three attacks, one bite, okay, and two claws. That's what we're gonna, that's our standard. Okay, that's our, our standard operating, um, uh, that's the one that's going to do the most amount of damage uh, in, in any round. So, and it's the one that you're most likely to be able to do because it doesn't recharge. Okay, so I'm going to go, so you need to write down the number beside whichever it is. So how many of a particular, you need to, you can't just write down a number, you need to remember how many D12s, how many D8s. You need to put down in the thing. 5d8s or 7d12s or whatever the heck it is otherwise i'm going to get lost uh, okay um hashtag need um 105 to 110 damage per round and that's nothing at that level that's a, that's a, that's absolutely nothing. It's very very low. Okay, so while you guys are figuring that one out, I'm going to go and take a quick break and let Arnold look after you. I'll go take my short break. I'll be back.
How are we doing, people? Are we getting it sorted? Hopefully you guys have uh, done some, some maths and figured it out. Yes, but lot like I said, um, if we're if we're aiming for to have it, it be challenge rating seventeen, then that's what we do. But that's not what people have asked for. They've asked for give it siege and move its damage output up. So we're going to move its damage output up to what it should be for a challenge rating seventeen monster, and that will change its ultimate challenge rating. Okay. If people decide they need to also we need to also drop the hit points on it, then we can do that. Um, but right now it's it's a just it's a monster that doesn't really it's got no teeth. Um, um, okay, so let's uh, let's cycle on over to our workstation and let's have a look at what we've got here. People have put in some information. Let's see what we've got here. Um, so we'll start off with a bite, uh, which is. Our bite is uh, three, so currently it's three D12 plus seven, which is fine, that all makes sense, but the number of D12s is not gonna, gonna work. We need that to be, and it comes out at an average of 26, which is, that needs to be almost three times as, as, as much. That's what we're looking at. It almost needs to be three times as much for us to be able to make this work, to hit 105 to 110 hit points per round. That's, that's what we're aiming for, uh, people. That's a lot. So what else have people said here? Um, D100 knows too much variation. It won't work. Uh, Milton, I, I understand what you're trying to go with here, but it, no, it's too much variation. Um, okay, don't understand that. Um, Yes, that's right. There is a, a a significantly easy one. The damage should be lower because the defense did. Uh, yes, but the problem is if you throw, if you have a challenge rating seventeen monster like this, it's utterly pointless. Do you know what I mean? It is. It'd be smarter to increase damage output and decrease hit points. And what we've currently got here, the, I mean, the armor class is actually not that far out from what a 17 should be. Um, so this actually winds up being a toothless monster. A complete waste of your time, I, I hate to say it. So yeah. It won't be a 17 anymore, Abs absolutely. If it does um, 58 um, damage per round, normally um, just double the, the dice should close up the gap. Um, that may well do it. That That's actually probably a vengeance, yep. Avenging Blowfish, that's actually not a bad idea. Let's go with that and see how that works out. So if we go with um, 6d12 plus 7 for our bite, which would come out to, oh god, maths. First off, let's go. Uh, so we've got 12, half of that. Uh, 6, uh, is it 6? I think it's 6. 12, 18, um... What have I missed? Have I missed the halves? I've missed the halves, haven't I? So it's not 18, so it'll be 12, 18. Um, it's 19.5 plus 7 comes out at 26. Okay, so that means 60, 12 is um, 6, 12s are 36. Plus another three for the halves, 36 is 39. 39 comes out at 40, 46. I think it's 46. So the average on the bike should be 46, if that's right. If I've got it worked out. Dungeons and Chronics, um, 10d12 and 12d8 uh, and 15d8. Oh, good blow, blow me. That's maybe a bit much. Um, 60, 12 for the bite, um, or 5 or 4, D8 for the, the claws. That's probably pretty close to where it needs to be. You're probably right right on the money there. 
Um, I know you do a lot of this sort of stuff, so I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Milton? Monster that's got no teeth? Are you joking? It has a beak. It's a turtle. It's a it's a tu uh, te uh, Turtles have teeth. <laughs> turtles have teeth. And yes, it, uh, you could consider it a joke, if you like. I'm fine with that. Fender, 60-12, and the bite's 48 for the claws. That might well be it. Uh, let's just check the claws. It's 2d8 plus 7. Comes out at an average of 16. So if we go 4, which is double, d8 plus 7 equals... Okay, so uh, again, I make sure I get my maths right. Uh, that's four, uh, eight, nine. Yeah, okay, so, so that goes four fours. Four fours are 16. Um, and two is 18 plus the seven, 18 and seven, 18 and seven, 18 and seven. 25 is the average damage coming out. I think I think uh, it might be just under. We might be just under where we need to be. So that means there's two of them doing that. That comes to 50. 50 and 46. 50 and 46 is... Um, that's 96. 96 hit points. It's still a little bit under. So what we'll do is make it very easy and we'll just pump up our bite a fraction more. Or do we do the claws? We could do the claws a little bit more. We could make them um, 5d8. Maybe that will be the uh, the solution. 5d8, what does that make? The, the change in it for a 5d8 is going to be what? Um, thank you, of, um, um, Avenging um, Blowfish. Yeah, I had a brain fart along the way, uh, as, as happens in these live streams. The Breath Weapon Recharge. Um, I'm not going to suggest, I mean, I, I know, I know why you're, you're going with that. I understand, but, um, I'm, I, a breath weapon recharge from five, uh, to, from five to six to just six. I know, I know that's what you're aiming for, but I'm not going to do that. Do you know why I don't want to do that? Is because the reality is that most battles are still, even with a dragon turtle, going to last, if you're lucky, three rounds. It's probably going to be less than that by quite a bit. Even with 341 hit points, Characters of uh, the kind of level they're dealing with at that point, they like kill that thing like you wouldn't believe. Um, so I, I understand what you're going with here. We'll, we'll, I'll have a think about it though. I do get where you're coming from. Um, now, uh, big balls. <laughs> you reckon it should recharge on a 5 to an 8 on a, a, a D8 roll? Um, yeah, have I done my maths wrong, Fender? So, average is 25, I got the 25 correct, twice, um, twice is 50, the bite is, uh, and the bite then comes to 99. Did I get my, did I do my, did I do my maths wrong with the bite? So, so it's um, 6.5 times 6. It's not 36, is it? It isn't. It's not 36. What am I doing? That's, um, that's, is that not? No, 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 36. It is 36. 36 and 3. 36 and 3 is 39. Add the 7. Is 46. No, I'm sure I got my maths right. I'm pretty sure I got my maths right on that one. Uh, right, okay, I see where you're going with this. I don't know that a recharge like that's such a great idea. I, I am I am I'm unreluctant to, to fiddle with the um the, the the steam breath that much. If people want me to do that. You, you that are here, I mean, most of you are here are patrons, and this is you, this is for you, and for those who are watching, you, you get to ride along with that, so and see that process. But you need to 
you need to tell me. I mean, if that is that really what you're after? Um, I, I'm kind of interested. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think what we do is we change the the claw out, output damage because it is <clears throat> it isn't exactly half, is it? So we can actually probably go up a little bit. That means the claws we're going to do probably not you know slightly more damage than in comparison. But it's the only way I can think of doing this. So yeah, check my maths, people. I'm pretty sure that six D twelve plus seven is actually forty six. Okay, just check my maths. So um, so that means five eight five eight is forty, and then we add the halves which is um, 2.5, isn't it? 2.5 comes to 42.5, add the 7. Um, have I just done a horrible mistake with my maths? I feel like I have. Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, no, no, it's not your bad. It's not your bad, it's just... It, it's just it's hard to it's hard sometimes to sort of remember exactly what I'm trying to do. Do you know what I mean? So I totally get it. Um, so the claw can't be that much more. I've made a mistake with my calculation. Five fours. Five fours are not forty. Five fours are twenty. There we go. Twenty. Two point five. Got that? Okay. So that's twenty two point five plus seven equals. A grand total of uh, 20, 29. 29 probably does it. So 229s comes out at uh, not 60, 58. 58 and 46. 58 plus 46 comes to uh, what the hell is it? Um, she's. Uh, take two off, put it into 60, 60, so that's 104. 104 is pretty close, people. I think that's it. I think that's where we are. Mentally, I don't think um, halves, um, so I, I just, uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is the main reason the, um, the, the dragon, the dragon is the dragon turtle. I mean, are, are other dragons really recharging that often with their dragon breath? If we have a look at other dragons and how they operate, are they really recharging that often? They're recharging their breath weapons are recharging on a 5 to a 6. Now, I mean, we, the question could go, well, you know, well, maybe that's, they should be different and they should recharge more often. But given that this creature can probably only use this feature a certain number of times, like it can't do it too many times. Three times is probably more than sufficient in a given day. It's probably not going to unload that often. Um, look, okay, let's let's look at the damage output now. So if we look at our bite, we're going to leave our attack bonus. We're leaving it alone. It's just our damage output. So that's the only thing I need to make sure I fix. How's it going, Dynamancer? Dynamancer is a, um, a patron. Welcome to the chat. Uh, let's see if I can get this right now. So the bite we calculated need to be not 3d12, but it's going to be 6d12 plus 7. The reach is fine. This is going to be 6d12, which is fine. We got that. Everything else is perfectly adequate. The claw we calculated needed to go from being 2d8 to 5d8 to solve most of our problems. And I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, so that's 5d8. And we're doing two of those tacks, so that's actually spreading it out a little bit, which is good. The tail tack itself... The question is has to be asked is if we do this, do we need to modify, we probably do need to modify the tail attack. Otherwise the tail attack doesn't look like a viable option with uh, the claws and the bite, does it not? Um, yeah, so recharge 5d6 is every three rounds on average. 
I think I think that's probably fine. Uh, so let me just save these changes. Have a look at see how it comes out, and we probably will have to do the tail attack as well. Okay, we'll probably have to change that. Everything else not so bad. Save this. Um, oh, the speed, the speed that it swims, swim speed, swim speed and land speed probably needs to be adjusted. So people you can, hashtag, um, hashtag what should be the swim speed. We have established that um, a tortoise is faster, a giant turtle is going to be faster than a kraken or a giant squid. Okay, so we know that. Um, and you could say, well, the kraken's not really a squid, but I mean, I guess you could say that. But I mean, yeah, but have a think about that. I think the bite should restrain the target, in my opinion. Um, escape DC 20, uh, cannot use steam breath while restrained. Possibly make it 50 feet because the Kraken is like a legendary creature, is it not? And the Dragon Turtle, in this case, is not necessarily. Um, uh, uh, I guess the question is how fast is the ancient Dragon Turtle in water? Dragon Turtle. But then again, I mean, that might be one of those things where you're like, uh, we need to adjust that as well. Um, ancient Dragon Turtle, Fizz Bands. So they made the Ancient Dragon Turtle, which is also gargantuan, 30 feet. I mean, almost immediately I feel like the swim speed of this thing should be, um, its, walk, its movement speed should be about 30 feet and its swim speed 50 feet would be fine with me. Adventuring swimming speed, same as fly speed from most dragons. You reckon you want to make it as much as that, Avenging Angel? I mean, I would be fine with even going as high as 60 feet for the Dragon Turtle um, that isn't the Ancient Dragon Turtle. Because the difference between an Ancient Dragon Turtle and a Dragon Turtle may not be size, but just the fact that it's older and does other things. 60, yeah, let's go with 60 feet swim. Let's do that. And let's, let's actually give it a walking speed of, uh, where was it? Of 30 feet. I, I think it actually probably makes perfect sense. I don't think we need to differentiate. I had, the, I had this discussion with AJ and he's like, I just don't like the fact that they've made them less than they were before. We're going to do this. On, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the land, it's 30 feet. It's gargantuan of all things. And we'll make it 60 feet here. Let's do that. <laughs> uh, right, so. 60 feet. Norok has gone with 60 feet. So Fendar said 50. So we'll go with, we're going to go with 60 feet. I think, I think I'm actually not um, against it. I would have been fine to go with just um, 50 feet. But that's, that's, that's all right. We'll do that. Now. Um, there was something else I was trying to do. Did I get distracted? Did I forget what I was doing? I can't remember. We were dealing with swim speeds. We were dealing with something else. Um, we're dealing with air and damage output. We did a damage output. I wanted to see the overall result of what it looked like in terms of the stat block. And then we'll deal with the tail. So how much damage should the tail do? Remember, you only get one bite and one tail attack. But it, the tail attack does other things. So hashtag. Hashtag. How uh, many... Um, what's, how many... How many... What is it? D12s. D12 for the tail. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's that. 
Um, Dragon Turtle Remastered. Let's have a look at this thing. Did it come out the way it was supposed to? Or is it still exactly the same? So I put it in and nothing's changed. Why has nothing changed? Did I make a mess of it somewhere along the line? Oh, I just didn't change the average number. That's what it is. I just didn't change the... I put in the numbers here, but I didn't put the average that I was supposed to, that I calculated for this. So that doesn't have that included. Okay. Whoopsies. <laughs> you reckon? All right, so let's go back into these attacks and put in the average that I left out, which is the bite on average is not 26 anymore. The bite does 46. 46 damage. <clears throat> Correct, 46, 46, 46, yes, that's there. Then the claws now do 29 on average. Hit 29. 29. We're leaving everything else alone. Two targets, 52 points, that's about 104 points. You might get three, so that's even more. So it's, it's, it's kind of in line. The breath, wind, breath weapon is actually fine as far as I'm concerned. Multiple targets, I agree. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. So... Um, Let's have a look back at our our, uh, our stat block and see if it came out right this time. Don't know that I necessarily have got that right, but we'll, we... That is 46, that is 29, 46, 29. Okay, so we've got that correct this time. That's going to come more in line with our, our target number. Maybe not a cone, just a, a roll dice, all targets within 15 feet of each other. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think I'm going to touch, I don't, I don't, nor I can't, I just don't want to touch the, the, the steam breath. Do you know why I don't want to touch the steam breath? It's because it, of the challenge rating and the, and the size of the cone is in line, kind of with a dragon. And the damage that it's doing is kind of in line with what you kind of expect from a dragon of that size. So I just feel like messing with it is a really silly idea. So I'm inclined to just leave it alone. The DC itself for the, the steam breath being an 18 is probably the only time that I would say I would have an issue with it. Um... It probably should be a, ni a 19 rather than an 18. That's that's probably the only thing with the steam breath that I would change. Uh, the other one being a 20, that's not a problem. I mean, being one point down lower is, is actually not a huge issue. But I would prefer not to make it too easy for our player characters. You know why? Because they got so much stuff. They can take it. They they can take a thrashing at this level now. They can They can really, they can throw down. Hi Luke, gonna run, but I'm glad I caught some some of of another of the uh, live streams. Luke, I'm glad you were able to make it. I'm glad it was useful to you. See your process and thinking, hosting. Okay, cool. If it was useful to you, hopefully you will do this yourself. Add tail as a bonus um bonus option, a bonus action attack doing same damage as claws without legendary actions. It needs more attacks anyway to keep up with the um the action economy of the players. Now that's an interesting idea. It, the, do you know the? I think the only the only th I mean, action economy is one thing. The more attacks you get, the more likely you are going to get your attack through. Because the fewer attacks you have, the more likely you low, roll low. I get I get where you're coming from here. But I don't think it's necessary. And you know why the the only reason I'm, I'm I would prefer to leave it the way it is is because of size. There are times where it would make no sense to engage the tail, and so the tail really probably needs to do um, tail is a not not a bonus action, but if it does similar dam damage as the 
or close to as the two claws and it has that other effect, that makes sense to me. Because um, the idea, you got to also, we've also got to be careful we don't make the monster too complicated. That was for the Fendar's suggestion for the tail, not the breath. Oh, okay. Um, so we, we, did I miss Fendar's suggestion? Um, multiple attacks agree. Da 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 Okay, I see where you're going with that. The tail is actually quite large. And how many targets? It only hits one target. The tail of a dragon turtle isn't really... I don't think a dragon turtle's... Um, the shape of their, their tail is actually that wide. Is it wide? I don't remember. What if I look in the old Advanced Dungeons and Dragons book? Dragon turtle... Dragon turtle, dragon turtle, where are you? No, it's it's long and it's long and narrow. Dragon turtle tail is normally not long and narrow, so it's only going to hit one target. So it doesn't actually make sense to go with area. Um, so we won't do that. Okay. Must have, yeah, I, I must have made, misread it. Trying to keep up with it and tracking everything is, is difficult. So let's do the tail before I run out of time. The tail attack needs to go up and damage. So we need to figure out how many, we're going to increase the dice on it. So it's going to do a bucket load of dice damage. Um, and it's a d12, so it's not quite so, yeah. But it's only going to come, in, come to, because remember orientation is going to be something that some dungeon masters use and some don't. But I still feel like if you build it, you build it so it makes sense. And dungeon masters often like to build things that make sense. So 26 is not a lot. What we can do is we could actually just double. Let's just double the tail attack. So the damage output is almost in line with the bite. Which means overall it will still do less damage than the claw, two claws in a bite. But it has that added feature of making the, um, the DC 20 strength saving throw. It will be pushed 10 feet away from the dragon turtle and knocked prone it's a very small effect it's it's not always going to be that useful and um i mean it's it, it to, to be to be fair i think if anything it's probably not going to be um impactful unless there's very specific circumstances so i think the easiest way is to go 60 12 it's super simple we wind up with a 46 in terms of our damage just like the the bite and it's done do you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to probably do that just to make life easier. And then I'm going to do the calculation for the uh, the challenge rating. Yeah. Yeah. The same. Yeah. Fender, that's exactly what I'm thinking. The tail, we're just going to make it exactly the same as the bite. So it's not the most optimal way in terms of doing damage. But the, the benefits are that it's uh, easy to implement. And where the heck is this? Yeah, six. It's easy to understand, and it, you do still have this feature. However, the dungeon master figures out how to use that. Its reach is, what, 15 feet with the tail? Its reach with the claws is, oh, what was the reach with the claws? 10 feet, which is not quite as far, so you can be quite a long way away. The bite, the bite is, uh, its neck is, must be long, it's got a 15 foot reach, so um, yeah, you can attack things at distance if you can't, yeah, so this is, the, I think that's the easiest way to deal with that, honestly, I think that's the probably the simplest way to deal with all of this, and we leave, ultimately I'm going to leave the breath weapon mostly alone other than increase the, uh, the DC from 18 to 19, it won't affect the challenge rating at all, and let's just see what our final product comes out at. And then we'll figure out the challenge rating. Um, if people are feeling like this just doesn't make sense, you'll let me know now uh, before we run out of time. I don't think it needs skills. Um, we've got the, the speeds changed. We've got the languages. I don't care whether it has these two languages. It's fine. Um, so let's, let's have a look at our final output for this creature. 
Dragon Pearl Remastered. Still not sufficiently different, but it's fine with us because we're not really trying to do that. And let's just see if everything is working out. So there's, there you go. So Bite and, um, and Tail will do 80, 92 points of damage. The Claw Attack will do, and the two Claws and the Bite will do, um, what, did I, what did I calculate it as? 104, which is close enough. So you do more damage with um, that combination. It works with the multi um, multi attack. We haven't had to change anything with that. Fred, um, regional effects should be um, sprouting. I I get it. I get it. Um, Dynomancer. No, I'm not going to give it a fog ability. Steam breath. Remember, this is there is an ancient dragon turtle as well. This is just the dragon turtle itself. Um, so I don't think the intention is to turn this into a legendary creature or get too silly with it. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to go more sparingly and just like, what really do we need to do? It needed to be fast. That was too slow. Um, and its attack damage output was just way too low for a creature of this. So let's let's check, check the challenge rating thing here. I'm going to reset all of this. Is it going to let me reset or is it not? Come on, reset, reset, thank you, reset, okay, so challenge rating we think is going to be about 17, where we know it's not going to be 17 at all, we didn't change the hit points, we didn't reduce them, so we still made it this bucket load of um, hit points of 341, 341, we didn't change any of that, the armor class, we didn't fiddle with the armor class, which is 20, it's gargantuan, so it's very large, the number of hit dice we made, uh, we didn't change hit dice at all. So it's just 22. 22, yes it is. Uh, its constitution is still unchanged at 20, so it's still quite high. Um, no, come on, get rid of that. Damage per round. Damage per round is now 104. That's more like it. Um... It's attack bonus saving throw. Oh, so the DC, the DC is a twenty nineteen. So I'm saying it's a nineteen. Um, it's attack bonus. Oh, it's attack bonus. Hang on. So we go here. So this is attack bonus is thirteen. We've got that. We're going to go down because its DC is now like a nineteen. Um, and then in vulnerabilities, no, it's got a resistance, didn't make any real effect. Saving throws, it's got three or four of them. We don't need to worry about the breath weapon because the breath weapon is an area effect thing. Okay, that's more like it. So we've kind of pulled things. So the offensive challenge rating is closer to where we wanted to be. Defensive is still 20. Challenge rating offensively is 16. We come out with an 18. So it's a nice sort of mix between the two, and um, it can keep up. I mean, the, a difference of uh, having a challenge rating of, uh, say, 16, which is what we had before, I mean, the difference in offensively was 11 and 20. Wasn't it something crazy like that? 11 and 20, that's too far apart. So that I think that's that works out better. I, I actually think that works out a lot better. So let's um, let's go back. I feel like we have kind of fixed our problem. And uh, that increase in damage output it didn't have very much of an effect on the challenge rating at all. All we have done is move it one, one point by making those changes. That's it. N nothing else has occurred. <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's, not, it's pretty good. Do you want to, who, who wants to lose a limb? I don't think that's losing a limb sounds like a good idea at all. Yeah, I... I Avenging Blowfish, I totally understand where you're coming from. I would prefer a Dragon Turtle uh, be an encounter. Uh, it's going to be alone, yes. And it makes sense that it would be alone um, without minions. So, yeah, it, it, basically making it a legendary creature, I, I do agree. It does make sense. The reality is I would probably take the Dragon Turtle and instead of making it a legendary keep creature, 
I would run it like this and then just add the legendary stuff over the top. But then again, I wouldn't use any of the legendary creature guidelines because they're garbage, um, because they don't work. But um, Avenging um, Blowfish, I totally understand your thoughts around this. Legendary resistance? I don't know that it necessarily needs legendary resistance. Do you know what I mean? I don't know that it necessarily needs legendary resistance. Okay, I'll tell you what. Do we need to make this a legendary creature? Do we need to make the dragon turtle a legendary creature? Let's just, I'm just going to ask that question now before I have to go to work. If we need to do that, then I will just add in the legendary, um, the actions. It, it, it'll go. We'll, we'll, we'll put it in. Um, so right now we can see that we are kind of build the monster as it makes sense, increase damage and um, add siege. So it's kind of like a stalemate, stalemate between that right now. So, let me do, let because he, he's right, um, Avenging Blowfish is right, it is, it is essentially going to be a solo creature. Solo creatures probably do need to have legendary actions. So let's go here, um, do we make the Dragon Turtle a legendary creature? Let's see. And I'm just going to say yes. No. And undecided. Undecide, undecided. Okay. Right. Vote. Oh, come on. Is it not going to go in? No, I don't want to do that. Get rid of this. Ask my question. There's my poll. Okay. Um, could it make a legendary version, say, um, a thousand years old? Um, I don't think it, you'd come um, across art a lot. So, yes, legendary. Yes, legend. Yes. Okay. How many people are voting in here and saying yes? Four votes already. <laughs> okay. Well, this is the legendary actions for the dragon turtle. Or we just cut and paste and stick them in. I think that's probably the, the solution there. Um, I mean, I'll take them out if, uh, if the votes um, change, but it looks to me like uh, that, that's, that's what people want. Bugger me. It's legendary now. Paste. Uh, the dragon turtle can't take. I can take. I can take. Okay, so the dragon turtle can take a legendary action at the end of every player's turn. We're not doing this three business. That's rubbish. Uh, choosing from the options below. Only one legendary action option can be used at a time and only at the end of another creature's turn. Okay. At the end of every player's creature's turn. Okay. Um, okay, so. So claw. Okay, so we've got here. We've got the claw. We've got the tail. We've got one claw tail. So now we're going to go one bite claw tail. One bite Claw tail, or tail attack. Uh, move it, it won't make any difference, tr trust me people, it will not matter if you have, we're doing an extra 20 or 40 points of damage. Not with uh, not with a single monster. Dragon turtle moves at speed, if the, speed, um, if the dragon turtle is swimming, this movement doesn't, okay, all right, that's fine. Boiling aura. Uh, the dragon turtle radiates intense heat um, until the start of the dragon turtle's next turn. Whenever a creature starts its turn within 20 feet of the dragon turtle, the creature, that creature must succeed on a DC. Now that's too high. Way too high. I'm going to go down to 19. Constitution saving throw or take. That's too much damage. That's too much damage because um, we're going to be able to do that quite a bit. So on average, we're going to halve that, I think. What's halve of... Half of um, 
98. It's 98, so it would be, is it 5d8? 5d8 is what? What's 5d8? Is 22. 22. 22, that's good enough. That's it. Natural disaster. That We got our natural disaster boiling aura. Um, it does not cost any actions. Get rid of this bullshit. Don't need that. This is not helpful for us at all. Okay, we're going to add in some additional things. Okay, we're going to um, actions. Um, additional actions. Additional actions. We're going to include a few things. I do this with all of my um, monsters, people. People. Frog idea. Da -da 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 each time, allow the police frog theme. Change the mister. I see where you're going with that, but we're not going to have time to get it all in. Okay, so you can dash, disengage, dash, disengage, uh, whoopsies. Let's try that again. Dash, disengage, dash, disengage. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, hide? No, doesn't make sense. But dash and disengage for the dragon turtle does make sense. What would be the other thing? Dodge. Dodge, we need to add dodge. Dodge. Um, what's another action in combat that's pretty standard that we probably should add that they can use as, as an alternative? I had forgotten all of them. My brain is going. Pfft. And I'm not looking at chat right now, people. So if I miss what you're saying, I do apologize, but I just don't have time. Uh... No hide, no help, dodge, disengage, dash, ready. Do we want a ready to action? We're going to give ourselves that versatility. No, we're not. We're not going to do that because it's already, we've already got too much going on. Ready to actions will just complicate the shit out of things. So we're going to leave that alone. Use an object and search. No, none of those are going to be appropriate. Only those three. That's fine. Um, and all of this is around movement, and movement is is uh, is king. So that is that, which means we need to have legendary. Um, what is it? Legendary. What the hell is it called? Legendary resistance. We need to give it legendary resistance. If it doesn't have legendary resistance, it's not really a legendary creature. And there's three a day. So let's find that and plunk it in. There it is. Copy it. Take it. Stick it over here. Paste it. That's that. Okay, so that's that. That's cool. That's fine. That's fine. We need to add this. And then we bold it. Okay, right, I think that is version 4, and that will make a suitable solo creature. Um, but it will also probably change a few things, because we now have made it... No, 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 it's... Look, to be fair, this is a very complicated monster to try to rework. Do you know what I mean? And everybody has had put forward some very good points, and I think in the end, I was... Just lower the uh, damage and give it um, a DC twenty save. Well, I lowered I lowered the um, the DC to a nineteen, which I think is more in line. Um, I mean, it could be a I mean, it could be a twenty. Nineteen twenty, it really doesn't matter, does it? Um, no, we're making it a nineteen. I think that's that's close to where we need to be. And at twenty two points damage, we've lowered the damage output, so that's fine. And we've got that all worked out. Let's see what we've got ultimately in the end. I'm kind of curious. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so being able to do that is very, very helpful. So um, giving them that is, is going to be a necessity. Otherwise, it. and the, the thing is with solo creatures, for those of you who have run a few of them, you know that there's really no rules that you can't break. 
you can break everything. You can break all the rules of these things because it just doesn't matter. Okay, so we've got all that. We've got all that. That looks fine. I don't need to ma make any adjustments to that. That looks good. We've got all that. We've got our additional things. Our legendary actions allow us lots of flexibility depending on the size of our party, which is what we wanted in the first place. Um, so potentially very useful. And to, to boiling, boiling Aura only affects the characters if they're in the water, which they're not going to be fighting the dragon um, turtle in the water unless they want to die. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, D DC 19 is fine. So... Let us just see if the calculator, I don't think, if I make it a legendary creature, did it have a factor for legendary creature? I don't think it did. Because legendary creatures, legendary resistance is the only thing we didn't add. A legendary resistance? No, we had legendary resistance. We have three of them. Three re legendary resistances. One, two, three. That will change things a little bit. It is going down, 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 down. Um, I think that covered everything. Challenge rating change? No, it didn't. Didn't even move. Didn't even move. There we go. We've done it. We did it. We've done it. Ha. Ha ha. Okay. Um, yeah, well, uh, per round it will adjust it a little bit. Per round. Per, per turn it won't, but per round it will adjust it. But you're fighting a single creature compared to um, a group of creatures. Do you know what I mean? That's the only difference. So it all works out in the end. Uh, so therefore the challenge rating and the damage output isn't really changing at all uh, to many res in many respects. Um, I guess I guess the, the, the point to be made and uh, the point you're, you're trying to make is that if since it's going to be acting on everybody's turn per round output damage is going to be up. But since the creature is on its own and it's not with anything else, then it, it, that doesn't, it, it won't really come in as a factor. It'll be, look, the, the true test is using the monster and seeing if it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't, uh, we'll have to fix it. Okay, so that, that, close that, got that. Looks like we've changed it sufficiently that it is now a, um, a legitimate thing. But, um, yeah, <laughs> good, good job. Good, 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 good job. We're all good. Okay. Um, sorry, I didn't bring up the um, the workspace as I was doing all these changes. I'm sorry about that, people. I, I, I'd, I'd forgotten. I'd, I was moving so quickly. Anyway, we're out of time, and I need to go, and uh, you guys need to get on with your days. And I, I want to thank um, everybody here who has been trying to help with this process. Um, so I want to thank all my patrons for supporting me so I can keep running this program every single week. We'll do a new monster in the future, of course. Um, I want to, but specifically I want to call out in the live chat those people who have been watching, but the ones who have been participating and helping me along, Avenging Blowfish, I want to say thank you. Noroak, who's a patron, thank you very much. Dinomancer, who's been trying to help as well, also a patron, thank you a lot. Fender, I need to say thank you to Fender. I know you've been there and you're also a patron and a moderator. Thank you very much for assisting in this process. It was a task in itself, it really was. Um, and who else was there in here that was... Uh, oh, yes. I believe, um, I, th I think that was the majority of people who were really sort of feeding me advice with regard to this, uh, that I could understand. Um, Milton, Milton, also Milton and Luke. Was it Milton and Luke? I think it was Milton and Luke. So thank you very much, people. If I've missed anybody, I do apologize. Um, yeah, complicated process. Anyway. Thank you for watching my live streams and the replays and the edited videos and putting up with my shorts videos. I do appreciate it. I have to do them. YouTube doesn't like me if I don't do them. And um, uh, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, or the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbors. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Bye. Bye. And yes, all of this will go up onto Patreon. 
the my notes and the stat block. 